How well do we know how food industries work? What do we know about how animals are being treated? Here are some statistics that will help us with creating that image. Over 56 billion farmed animals are killed every year by humans. These shocking figures do not even include fish and other sea creatures whose deaths are so great that they're only measured in tons. In March 2013, David A. Kessler, a writer for New York Times, provided to us the information that more than 80% of the antibiotics used in the United States were fed to livestock. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, almost all of the cattle raised on factory farms are fed a diet that consists of GMO, corn, even though cows are naturally meant to eat grass. Food columnist Jill Richardson provided information that more than 75% of chickens raised on factory farms had their beaks cut off. As reported to PETA, 65% of hogs tested from factory farms had pneumonia. Animal cruelty is a big problem around the world, but the worst cases appear in food industries. We must change the deplorable way we treat animals in the food making process. Animals are treated badly in several ways. Unhealthy diet animals consumed during cultivation affects them negatively. Switching a cow from grass to grain is so disturbing to the animal's digestive system that it can kill the animal if not done gradually and continually fed at antibiotics. These animals have evolved to forage and rechew food that has been stored in the rumen, which is a fermenting chamber in the stomach. However, on feedlots, they're made to eat grain, primarily corn, in order to make them as fat as possible in a short amount of time. Also, cow's horns are burnt off by farmers with hot iron, but without painkillers. Poor life conditions of animals cause some dangerous diseases that may kill them. Impeccably clean by nature, pigs on factory farms are forced to live amid their own feces and vomit, and sometimes even amid their car corpses of other pigs. By the time they're sent to slaughter, many pigs on factory farms suffer from lungless caused by pneumonia. Ammonium burn and respiratory diseases are also common from exposure to high concentration of ammonia emitting from large accumulation of feces. As for the chickens, they are treated equally bad as pigs. When they're raised to lay, to lay eggs, they're put into small metal cages where they cannot spread their wings or make other moves that are natural to them. On the other hand, when the chickens are raised for their meat, they gain so much weight in a short period of time that their legs cannot hold their overweight bodies and they cannot walk or reach water, and they die. Mass production causes the mistreatment of animals. When the food company is big, the number of animals is also big, and the care taken of them is reduced. Everything goes faster and everybody just wants to make a profit out of it without thinking how harmful to those living creatures can it be. Research shows that factory farms' widespread use of antibiotics can lead to antibiotic-resistant bacteria that also can threaten human health. Antibiotics are used to make animals grow faster and to keep them alive in the unsanitary conditions they are living in. Also, Animals are being killed in most inhuman and heartbreaking ways one could imagine. Chicken and standardized, chickens are standardized such that they can be slaughtered via machine. They are killed at the rate of more than 180 per minute, mostly by machine, because the birds are all the same size and shape, more or less. There's a person who's supposed to kill the birds that the machine misses. Although they don't have 100% accuracy, so some birds enter the next phase of processing while still alive and conscious. Turkeys won't have the opportunity to breathe fresh air or feel the sun on their backs until they're shoved onto trucks bound for slaughter. They are transported for hours without food or water through all weather extremes, and many will die on this nightmarish journey. At the slaughterhouse, the survivors are hung upside down by their weak and crippled legs before their head heads are dragged through an electrified stunning thing, which immobilizes but does not kill them. Many birds dodge the tank and are still completely conscious when their throats are slit. If the knife fails to properly cut the bird's throat, they are scattered alive in the tank of boiling water used for feather removal. Mass production is not only affecting animals negatively when it comes to poor nutrition 
and not being slaughtered properly, but it is also affecting them mentally. Of course, nobody cares about how they feel, even though they are the ones who are feeding us and basically giving us lives. Animals get, get stressed just like we do, and they are showing it, but it seems that their scream is just too silent for us. Signs of stress of an, at animals could be shown in several ways, and it is a cry for help we are incapable of reading and hearing. Because chickens have a pecking order and will peck other chickens to death, the birds are de-beaked, which means that the tip of their beaks are being cut off, also without painkillers. Um, when, chickens, when chickens are raised uh, with more space and less stress, they are far less likely to peck one another. But since the food industry mantra is money before mercy, that is not likely to happen. It is entirely possible to raise birds for eggs without debeaking them, but that would require keeping them in human conditions. Just like humans, cows will only produce milk if they give birth. Forcible impregnation is carried out each year and their calves are separated from their grieving mothers shortly, shortly after birth. Why is that better than separating a baby from its mom? Female calves may go on this exploited may go on to be exploited for milk, but the unwanted males and excess females are either shot at birth or briefly raised for veal before even having their lives drastically cut short in the slaughterhouse. Pigs are smart individuals fully aware of their own existence, and they're enjoying their lives when they're given the chance. They can spend hours playing, rooting in ground, laying in sun and exploring their surroundings with their keen sense of smell. They take pleasure in doing things, in these things, and like us, they want to continue experiencing and enjoying their lives. Possibly, the, uh, possibly those who suffer most in the food industry are sows used for breeding. They are repeatedly forcibly impregnated throughout their lives, often severally confined and then separated from their babies soon after giving birth. They suffer both physically and mentally. The lives of these pigs and their capacity to reproduce are seen as no more than a way of creating more units of production. Mothers unable to give birth to the required number of piglets are sent to slaughterhouse. Animals literally sacrifice their lives for us and we are still ungrateful. It is better for the world and for the animals for them to be treated with care. Firstly, animals are the ones who are making this planet beautiful and diverse. They are doing nothing wrong to this earth, unlike we are. Animals are just living th their lives the way they're supposed to, without making any damage. So, we should ask ourselves, who are we to just come and take their lives whenever we want? We have a right to stay silent, considering the harm we have made and that we keep making to this planet. And what do we do? We just kill innocent animals just so we could enjoy a meal we did not deserve. If animals are happy, we are happy. They can survive without us, but we cannot survive without them. And that is something we should always have in mind. If we have already decided to eat the animals, we should at least appreciate them and give them the care that they deserve while they're still alive. It is bad enough that we're using life living beings as food. So let's just at least give those beautiful creatures natural food and good life conditions.